All right. I think we fixed it. There we go. Yay, and we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't know why. It was just locked in, in in portrait mode, and I couldn't change it. So, anyway. Anybody hear me okay? I got my external microphone plugged in, so hopefully that'll help the audio. Hey, Donna, how are you? Good. Thanks, Seth. Australia. <laughs> I started to do an accent. That's just a bad idea. Not going to do that. <laughs> uh. All right, good. <laughs> I knew you would appreciate me not doing it. I know. I, I got it. I, I Actually, I know I have some people that I know from New Zealand. And yeah, it's... Uh, actually, no, it's just green tea with some uh, lemon and honey in it. I thought if I'm going to be uh, talking a lot here and it's going to be live, then it might be a good idea to have some tea. <laughs> hey there. Like I said, apologize about the change on the last one. I know you guys were already here waiting, but uh, I didn't realize it was locked in portrait mode. I haven't live streamed in quite a while, so. All right, Ohio's here. Hey, John. Well, um, it was just kind of an impromptu idea earlier. I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm throwing some, uh, some planters and some other things for uh, my next wood firing, and I thought I would just uh, go ahead and schedule a live stream and and do a little bit of this. What am I making you today, Seth? I hear you. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm uh, I'm firing bisqueware in my wood kiln. Now I could fire greenware, um, but uh, just the way that I glaze and handle pieces, it's it's a whole lot easier for me at this moment to go ahead and bisque fire everything. So I bus uh, I bisque fire everything uh, for my wood kiln as well as my gas kiln. Hey, Diane. So anyway, so I'm going to be throwing some, uh, uh, first thing I, I've made, uh, here, I'll show you guys. There's some planters there that I just made a little while ago. So there's a, a couple six pounders and then there's a 10 pound one there. Thank you, Megan. So I'm going to make another 10 pound one and uh, hopefully I can make one to match the size of this other one. Um, that one right now is 14, about 14 and three quarters across. Uh, oh yeah, I'll be, t I'll be attempting that again. Uh, not right now, <laughs> but I will be attempting that again. That was a lot of fun and I thought, you know what, I spent all this time making this video and then it failed. I thought I'd put it up anyways because, um, yeah. yeah. We're all human, so anyway, uh, but uh, I've made some, uh, here I'll show you guys. I've made some uh, planters over the last few days. Oops, sorry, a little. So I've got these over here that I made, and the, the neat thing about the wood kiln is that I can actually fire these stacked like this, and I'll put the wads of clay in between the two rims, and so uh, and that'll leave really neat marks on the, uh, um, on the rim of the pot when they come out of the wood kiln. So uh, I try to make, when, I, when I'm making these, I'm gonna try to make them in pairs at least so that they'll match um, the ones that I can. I don't have to, and, and the good thing is even if, I, if I don't, even if I have pairs and then I don't have space to make them as a set to stack them rim to rim, that I can still fire them individually and it doesn't matter. So anyway, before we get started, Here's a preview for you guys. I do have a video. I haven't edited it yet, but I've recorded it. A kiln unloading video. You guys probably saw a picture on Instagram and Facebook, uh, if you're on either one of those, of the, uh, <coughs> of the uh, vase. Um, 
here's that vase that was in the uh, Instagram picture. That came out uh, yesterday out of my gas kiln. Uh, really pretty. Let me turn this light on here. Uh, here we go. So you can see a little better. There we go. Yeah, that one turned out uh, really nice. I got a couple others. I did some, uh, some of these ones with the tall skinny neck. The uh, color and the variation on that one. Really pretty. Here's another one with the uh, copper red and blue. The tall skinny neck. And these are actually not the ones I made on the video about tall skinny necks. I made some more and made them even skinnier. Um, just pushing it. And then uh, here's a nice bowl that I did with a new, uh, a new pattern as well, new design. So, anyway, there's a, uh, for being here at the live stream, you can, uh, uh, oh yeah, the red is food safe. That's a copper red. Um, the, uh, the only reds that are not food safe are the ones that are fired at a lower temperature. Um, those usually have uh, lead in them to get that color red or some other chemicals that just aren't food safe so anyway but I've got some clay balls here already measured out for us let's move these vases so I don't break those in the process might need a bat and I might need a yeah I make the copper red glaze myself yep all the glazes that I use currently I, I mix myself um, I actually had this conversation recently with uh, uh, somebody that stopped by that was a, uh, a fan of the YouTube channel. They, they were in town and wanted to come by. Uh, oh, it's not necessarily a temperature that's food safe. Um, sorry, I, I didn't mean to imply that, but the, the, a lot of the, the red that you see that's a really bright Christmas red, um, you know, anybody that's doing that, there, I mean, there are some lower temperature reds that would be food safe. But there's, you know, very specific reds um, that are not food safe. Like Ben Owen, he's a local potter that's been doing that for years. And he marks everything he does in that red as not food safe if it's not. So um, so it's not necessarily a specific temperature. It's more of a, the specific glaze. Um, but I'm not an expert in that glaze, so I'm not 100% I'm not sure all about that. Yeah, I like mixing my own glaze, but I had that conversation with, uh, with that couple that came by. And I told them that, you know, if, if somebody doesn't have the uh, expertise and the, and the time to mix their own glazes, and they're, especially if you're firing to a, to a mid-range, you know, cone, cone six or, you know, five, six, somewhere seven in that range, that buying commercial glazes, I don't fault anybody for buying them because there's so many, uh, so many nice glazes you can just buy that are already pre-mixed add water and mix it up and, and dip it and glaze it and it's gonna look a lot like what the sample that you've seen. So I don't fault anybody for using those. You're gonna pay a little bit more, of course, for having it pre-mixed, but uh, hey there, welcome from the UK. Sorry, I didn't see the name. I got the camera moved back a little bit so you can see more of what's going on, but it makes it harder for me to see the chat. <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to make a, a 10 pound uh, planter here like the one that I showed you a minute ago. And so I just centered, this was <clears throat> uh, about 5 pounds, maybe a little over in the other ones. I think I I'm, cut up most of them into 5 pound clay balls, but I had one that was like 4.5, so I cut that one like 5.5 so that I could match them up. A lot of times I don't throw this much clay in one, in one piece anymore. I'll make sections, but uh, uh, well, thank you very much. Yeah, this clay's a little bit stiff, uh, but I I had some uh, the clay that I bought 
was really soft, so I actually uh, stiffened some of it up a little bit. I think that said something about a wood fire sale. I, I couldn't see. Uh, my next one is going to be uh, April 18th and 19th is the first weekend. And the next weekend after that is the second weekend of my next kiln opening sale. Um, but I will be saving. Uh, yeah, I buy a different clay for my wood fire than I do for my gas kiln. I'd like to find one clay that I can use for both, but I haven't found one that works for both yet. Hey there. <laughs> I've tested a couple that I could use in both, and this is one of them that I tested in my gas kiln recently, but I did have some pinholes in the gas kiln, so it's kind of like, all right, do I want to play around with my firing schedule in my gas kiln or my glaze recipes in my gas kiln in order to, to just use one clay? Is that more of a hassle than just using two clays? I just haven't decided yet. Of course, I, I still have a good supply probably at least a thousand pounds of my Hestia that I use in my gas kiln currently so definitely not changing anything until I use that up. So I might, uh, I've got, I do have a video coming out tomorrow morning. I have uh, glazed the, uh, the wood, uh, I mean a uh, gas kiln number two for 2020, the unloading of that kiln. Uh, I'll be editing that tonight, and uploading that. That'll be out tomorrow morning. <clears throat> and then I already have another one actually recorded <clears throat> that I also need to edit. And I'll, uh, and that's I, I, when I was throwing these first few uh, planters a couple days ago. I recorded an uh, episode making those as well. So in that one I discuss different kinds of planters as well. I went over ones that have the a tray attached and ones that don't. Kind of a different, you know, different ways of making them. I missed that last comment. It was fading away right as I saw it. So. Oh yeah, thank you for helping out there. <laughs> and with these planters, I'm trying to leave a really nice thick rim. If I do want to stack them rim to rim in the kiln, I need to have a nice thick rim and just a, a planter in general looks really good with a nice thick rim. So I'm trying to leave a really um, uh, I won't pull this top anymore. I'll just pull up to that, but I'll be stretching it out. So it'll get a little thinner just by getting stretched wider. And they don't have to be the same shape either. Like uh, as long as I get the, the width of the top the same. And also I could I could put these if they don't match up rim to rim. I could put put one upside down on wads on the floor or on the shelf and then put wads on the bottom and then put it bottom to bottom and then the next one would be open on top of that so there's all kinds of options like I said I think they look really neat um, hey there Melissa another thing that that you can do which is really neat in a wood kiln is if I have two really large planters and I put them rim to rim like this I can actually put a pot inside of here that it, it's kind of like creates a little you know sagger in, inside of the Inside of the wood kiln, you'll have a little, uh, hey there, <laughs> yo money, is that, Measure the width on this and see. Uh, uh, a sagger is, is like a, you can create a, it's like an enclosed atmosphere inside of a kiln, so it basically you can, 
it kind of protects it from the atmosphere that would be around it. I guess I don't know the official uh, uh, definition, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that on stream, the two part, but I but I am going to try that again. So um, uh, it just takes it takes a while. I gotta I gotta let those two pieces set up, and and I'm not going to take that long on stream, and I I don't think I'm not going to get a torch out at this point. Uh, to make one, so. My low battery signal popped up, gotta love that. I might have to unplug my microphone here in a, a few minutes and, and uh, plug in the, the charger. Yeah, wad, uh, the wad uh, that I have, um, the wadding clay or what we call wads, um, is actually it it is a mixture of uh, the recipe that I have that I used last time has some clay in it um, let's see alumina hydrate in it there's a few different things I can anybody that wants a specific recipe I can get you one but it's basically um, it's a, it is a clay mixture uh, that that won't uh, it won't my wood kiln it won't stick to it like it does everything else and so the wads uh, keep the pot elevated off the shelf so that it doesn't stick to the shelf and then after they come out of the kiln you have to take those wads and break them free from the bottom of the pot um, and then clean up that surface. Um, let me check this measurement again. Oops. I think I've already gone, yep, I've already gone too wide. I thought it was wider than that. That's alright. I'm not bringing it back in a whole inch from where it is here, so we'll just make another one. I got talking too much. <laughs> I'm never guilty of that. Oh my. Uh, yeah, I don't mind sharing the recipe of the slips that I use. Uh, I don't have a memorized. I'd have to share them um, at a later point. So there's a, the only problem I have with this ruler is it starts at 18. <laughs> I bought a 36 inch ruler and I cut it in half so I could have two 18s and I don't know where the first half is. So I have to measure and do math in my head at the same time. So this one's about eight inches tall and uh, let's see, almost 16 inches wide. So, yeah, let's do this before we finish. I'm going to put some grooves in here just to have a little decoration. I'll come back and put hands uh, like I did my other ones. I think it makes them look really neat having that little extra touch of decoration. Hold on a second, I'll catch up on comments here in just a second. Let me set this one down. I don't think it's going to fit beside that one. Set it there. I'll catch up on comments in just a second, guys. Here we go. All right. Let me look at comments here, and we'll cover some of those and get back to making the. Oh. 
All right, I'm going back just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to plug up my phone. Okay, thank you. Let me do that right now while I'm in between. All right, there we go. Plugged in. Uh, the racks I bought from uh, a friend of mine, they were uh, a, like a warehouse, uh, I think that was going out of business. Um. <laughs> Potter's Journal, I see that, yeah. Yeah, we all, uh, at times, we got uh, things we'd rather do than put handles on, right? <laughs> yeah, I try to throw really clean. It's something I learned... Um, yeah, I tell you, uh, as far as throwing clean, uh, Joy, uh, I just started learning that when I was uh, really early on, um, 16 years old. So 20, you know, 25, 26 years or 25 years ago, um, I just was just taught at a, the first one of the first shop to, uh, that I worked at um, just to clean up around the base of the pot. I'll tell you a really cool story, actually, on the, on the idea behind that. Uh, one of the first shops I worked at, I uh, was working there. And uh, uh, I, was, I was probably still 16, 17 at the time. And uh, I had made a bunch of these really small bowls, like half pound bowls. We called them a nut bowl. And um, we, uh, I, I probably made 50 or 60 of them, who knows how many. And I didn't do any of the finishing. I didn't do any of the signing or sanding or any of that. They just went out back and they had another guy that was doing that. And um, the guy that owned the shop came in there and he's just this really gruff northern guy. I mean, my family was from the north anyways, but he just was really gruff and really kind of like, he wasn't mean, but he was just kind of stern and he just came in and I had a the board in front of my wheel where all my pots that I was making and he just came in and he like tapped his hand on the wheel and he was like, like this, just like, didn't say a word, just like, yeah, that meant follow me. And I'm like, okay, so I left what I was doing, followed him and went out there and he, he grabbed one of the bowls that I had sitting there and he like, picked it up and he's like, you see that right there? And he looked at the bottom and there was just like a lip of clay where I had left the clay around the base of the pot um, after I threw it. And he's like, I want you to stand here and sand all these. And uh, like I said, 50 or 60 bowls with a bunch of junk around the bottom of them. And they were already dry at that point. And I was like, so I started sanding away and, and he came back like 30 minutes later and he's like, you understand now? And I was like, yeah, I got it. So... <laughs> Uh, that taught me really quick uh, uh, that uh, I should keep a clean bottom on my pot when I finish because it's a whole lot easier to do when the clay's wet than after it dries. So there's a quick, uh, there's my Bob Ross story for the day <laughs> to go with my good vibe shirt. I don't know if you guys, uh, let's see, you'll see that in the video tomorrow, actually. I got a new shirt that I wore, I bought just for the video uh, that'll be going up tomorrow morning. So, all right, let me look at a couple more comments and then I'll get back to, uh, to throwing. Best date for recycling clay. I have mine. I keep it really wet, and then I, uh, I'm actually going to make a video sometime soon about that. And uh, I just kind of dump mine out onto a, a, a piece of plywood and let it stiffen up and then repug it. Um, so. Uh, this clay here is actually from Starworks. This is the Oka Medium that they mix at Starworks. I also use a clay from High Water. Yeah, I do salt when I wood fire, Sarah. Uh, my, uh, my camera is my cell phone. That's what I use for my videos and what I'm using right now for live stream. All right, let me go back up a little bit. Um, do I ever do bowls this size? I have done some. Actually, well, I haven't in a long time. I haven't made any bowls this size. Maybe I should make some for my wood kiln. I have never used a Chino in my wood kiln. I don't know how well that would work in my wood kiln, um, but uh, yeah, maybe I'll try it eventually. So. No, actually I, I won't trim these. Um, most of my videos I don't trim. Um, Shelby, if you, um, I've got a couple different videos. Uh, one of the last ones I put out about letting my pots dry on the bat. Um, you know, that, that kind of covers that idea. 
uh, quite a bit. Um, I've taught myself over years to throw to where I need it to be so that, you know, when I'm finished with throwing the piece, that I don't have a whole lot of extra clay down here in the bottom and I already have that foot thrown on there when I throw the piece. And so there's not a lot of extra clay there that I need to trim off and I've already got the finished look. You can see the shape of the bowl that I already had. That was totally done when I threw that bowl. I didn't have to come back and trim that shape into it. And so I just taught myself over years of how to do that and it's just a more efficient way but I still also have like a nice curve to the inside of the bowl. There's a little bit of a a flatter spot right there in the center but I always try to get those curved pretty well um, and still have that foot on there once they're finished. <clears throat> anyway, alright we'll throw another 10 pound uh, uh, planter here. Oh you're welcome, you're welcome. I did see another comment that I was getting ready to respond to and I um, yeah I do pug that's what I was gonna say um, I do pug instead of wedge um, if I have my choice ever I will always use a pug mill I wouldn't want to live without one that's actually one of the questions I got from one of the uh, potters that came to visit as well they said is it, is it worth the money because they're not cheap and I'm like I don't want to live without one but it all depends on how much you produce really because if you're just doing it as a hobby it's a very expensive piece of equipment to have for a hobby um, but then again too it saves me a lot of energy and a lot of time a lot of risk of hurting my wrists and my arms so to me it's well worth it possible to build your own pug mill I don't know I've, I've got to, it's funny you ask that because I've got a uh, I don't know if any of you guys know Justin's Makery. He's had a YouTube channel as well. Um, uh, and I, uh, he, he actually asked me the same thing. He said, I've been playing around with the idea of, uh, of making my own. And I'm like, well, man, I don't, know, I don't know how to tell you the first thing about doing that. But it's probably possible because they make them. You know, somebody makes them. <coughs> As far as Nsika goes, um, it's possible that I'll be there for Thursday. I have a show that starts Friday in Hickory, North Carolina. But <clears throat> I've, been, uh, I've been thinking that if I get everything ready, if I have all of my pots packed, I have to leave Friday morning from here in my house to drive to Hickory because I have to be set up uh, by like 5 o'clock. Friday afternoon. So if I have all of my pots ready and they're all packed and all I have to do is come home, put them in the trailer and uh, and get on the road, then I'll be, uh, but I'll only be going up probably Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening, because uh, if I do go up, there's somebody I'm going to be hanging out with a little bit. At least that's what I've talked to him about. Um, and if so, then I'll be there on Thursday. Uh, but really only Thursday and then leaving uh, Thursday afternoon or evening and coming home. So if I am there and you do see me, feel free to come up and say hi. I don't mind at all. I don't bite. One good thing about making planters is you really don't have to guess about how thick the bottom is because you're going to put a hole in the bottom anyway, so you can uh, check that and know exactly how thick the bottom is.
<clears throat> I'll tell you, uh, uh, these bats are, are all quarter inch thick. Yeah, I'm definitely going to make more sinks in the future, uh, Seth. Uh, actually, when I, I showed that bowl earlier that I just got out of my <clears throat> uh, gas kiln, I thought, man, that would have been a pretty sink. So, I will do that. I Like I said, I did that one as a custom order. Uh, that's something that I'd, that I'd almost rather do as custom orders because it really depends on what what drain the person is going to use as to how big the hole needs to be in the bottom. I mean, there's kind of a, a size variance depending on uh, what drain they're using, and, and each drain <coughs> will have the size that you need to make the hole or the hole needs to be to use that drain. So I hesitate making them in advance too much, but I definitely want to. Yeah, I've made custom urns, Janet. <clears throat> I've done some, um, I actually did one just recently. Um, let's see, I missed that last one. Okay, yeah, um, well, as far as softness of clay, it all depends on what I'm going to be making um, and how soft I want that clay or how stiff I want it. Uh, and so it all, I just change it based on um, what I'm going to be making or what I plan to make. There's certain things that I know that I, I'll put it this way, anything that I can use soft clay for, I'm going to use soft clay because it's easier on my body. And it makes the process of throwing actually quicker as well because it's easier to sender. Um, but anything that's going to be like these, you know, I knew making these planters, I'm going to want to make them really wide. I'm going to want to have this really thick rim on top. And I'm going to need a little bit stiffer clay to do that just to hold the shape. Um, you try to throw something 10 pounds that's this wide out of soft clay, and you're just going to have a, a really hard time. Um, and so I take the clay out of the bag <clears throat> that's pretty soft when I get it from Starworks. And, and I'll just cut it up into four pieces and set it out on the table and let it kind of stiffen up overnight and then and then re and then run it through my pug mill at least once if not twice just to make sure it's all homogenous. Alright, I think I got all the all the clay out of the bottom of that. Alright, I'm going to measure the width of this one, give me an idea. Alright, I'm already past the width of that one, so I'm going to make one to match the last one I just made. So I don't really have to go much wider. Um, so I'm just going to focus on bellying out the shape of it, and then at the end, if I need to go wider, I can always make it wider at the end. As you guys know, if you're potters, <laughs> you can always make a pot wider. It's making it skinnier that's hard, especially when it's already this wide. You're not going to get it to go back in very easily. But the force of the wheel, you can always get them to go out. <laughs> Sometimes at the detriment of the pot, but first, like I said, I'm just going to focus on getting this shape and then, uh, and then measure the width again and go from there. Yeah, I didn't make any planters for my last wood firing. Uh, of course, that was in the winter. This one being in the spring, I thought, you know, it'd be a good idea to make some for people that are coming shopping in the spring. All right, yeah, I definitely have some width I can gain there, almost an inch. I'm 
little bit of a wobble to this one. I'm going to stop before it gets too bad. Once I get the right width here. And I got it, so. catch up on comments again here in just a second. I probably should do a double board to put those on. Making that sag a little bit. I'm going to do one up here and do a double. Last thing I want is those bats to flex and make a warped, make a warped pot out of it. I'm going to go move that other one. All right. You want to say hi? Sure. There's Danielle. <laughs> You'll see her in tomorrow's video too. Although she doesn't say anything. She just says hi. Okay. She's got work for me to do. But I'm going to make a couple more pots so we can uh, make this a little bit longer. All right, let me check up on uh... <laughs> yeah. Anyone down there still using a donkey to pug their clay? No, I don't believe so. <laughs> Yeah, honeydew list. Yep. Uh, she, uh, her treadmill that she uses every single day died on her today, so she went to get a new one. Oh, double the, the bottom board? No, actually, the bottom board has some, has some uh, uh, supports in the middle of it, uh, the metal, so I don't have to double it. But yeah, the ones up there, yeah, I, wanna, I wanted to double that one. All right, um, <coughs> I'm gonna make a, uh, maybe we'll make a, a 10 pound platter bowl. How's that? And we'll see how long that takes. And if it takes long enough, we'll, uh, we'll end it after that. I need some large platter bowls as well for the, uh, for the firing. Looks like my camera's tilted. There we go. Yes, I did. I married up. I will, uh, uh, I tell everybody, I got her while she was young and naive and didn't know any better. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll, uh, uh, we'll, like I said, we'll make a, a 10 pound platter bowl here, see how long that takes. And also, um, that'll cover a little bit of what we talked about earlier about trimming versus not trimming, putting the foot on it. And also maybe cover a little bit of like what we uh, covered in that video about throwing in reverse. We'll do a little bit of that too, to shape the inside of this bowl. Yeah, I saw your comment earlier about uh, any tips on teaching I, I didn't know what to say, so I didn't reply. 
Um, I haven't taught too many people how to throw, so I'd say, uh, uh, of course, centering is the hardest thing for anybody when they get started. And I always tell people um, the the best that they can do. Oh, my towel fell. What they can do to keep their arms tucked into their body the most they can, whether they're standing or sitting, um, to keep their arms tucked in while they're centered, and that's going to help keep their arms steady and not going all over the place. Um, that's, you know, the first battle is to get in that clay centered, and it's so hard um, for j just about everybody to do that. So, start small and start with soft clay. That definitely helps, too. Don't let them try anything huge or uh, use too stiff a clay because that's just uh, just asking for trouble. Yeah, practice, practice, practice. You're right. There's no no amount of money in the world that can uh, take the place of a skill developed over years and years and hours and hours and hours of practice and you know that's that's why they say you know at least 10,000 hours to master a, to develop a skill or master a skill I kind of did some quick math the other day I probably have like 40,000 hours making pots so Yeah, I've been to the UK. I visited uh, before I got married. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many pots I make per week. It's it's a lot different now. I, what I used to do, I used to throw production for other potters. And here, just a few years ago, I was working for uh, two different potters. All I did is work for two other potters, and I, I threw 600 pounds a week for one and 400 pounds a week for the other. And I did that week in and week out for a couple years so I mean you know when I did that it was um, you know that's a lot of pots that's pretty good if you have 10,000 hours throwing then that's awesome most people are not willing to put that kind of time into to just about anything and that's what makes uh, that's what makes developing a skill and anything valuable is that uh, most people don't have the patience to, because you, you, I mean, you're never good starting anything. You always stink when you start anything new. You know, I mean, uh, apart from the fact that, you know, you may have some God-given talent that helps you, but that doesn't replace skill, but it, uh, it definitely helps you, but it doesn't replace skill. Skill is still, still will enhance the talent that you have. Um, which I totally believe that I have some talent that God gave me uh, for art and for pottery. But if it wasn't for all the hours I put in, I still wouldn't be as good at it. move my water bucket back otherwise I'm gonna hit it That's probably enough of pulling, um, especially seeing this is going to be wood fired. I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker anyways than I would if I was gas firing it. It's going to have to withstand a little bit more temperature and, you know, just that volatile atmosphere of a wood kiln with all those flames moving through the pots. And 
probably more, uh, possibly more extreme temperature changes. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is shape the outside a little bit. I started by making that little foot down there. I'm gonna start by pushing it out a little bit from the inside with my rib on the outside and kind of smooth up the outside end to start my shape. And then I'll go into reverse and uh, shape the inside. Clean out all the water on the inside. Now I'm going to wet the outside. Use my sponge, go all the way down with it. Wetting the outside. All right, now I'm going to go in reverse. Get my rubber rib here. I can't really read comments while I'm doing this. This takes a lot of concentration. And I can't look up at the phone. Alright, now I usually go back in regular, regular direction. I'm going to wet the rim and lay the rim over. And then I'll probably go back in reverse again after I lay the rim over. I'm going to go ahead and put my swirl on the bottom. on that right there at the edge of where I laid that lip over and then go down from there. Just working on that curve all the way down. this joker is well it's more than 18 so about 18 and a half to 19 inches wide and now I have to take my splash pan off in order to get the bat off <laughs> and I'll probably uh, double up this board here again before I move the pot So there you can see the shape and the foot's already down there. It'd be easy setting that down. Woo. So 19 inches wide and only uh, I'll take off the quarter inch. We got about four and a half inches tall. <laughs> That's pretty crazy there. There, let me uh Yeah, that one turned out well. 
All right, let me check up, uh, uh, catch up on comments, not check up. Hey, Sally, I didn't see you were here. Hope you're still here. Yeah, the uh, spooky, the uh, the sponge I hold in my right hand is just to keep water on the pot as I'm pulling. <laughs> yeah, Jan, it is a little confusing. Your head, really, like, even my, my brain was like, this is a little tricky, but once I... Once I did it a couple times, it really, I was like, man, this actually really works well. Yeah, I definitely, uh, Todd, I try to throw really clean and I think it really helps a lot of different, in a lot of different ways. Yeah, that was 10 pounds of clay, Benjamin. Uh, as far as that bowl, like, I, I don't know, it, it's, you know, the, I, I don't think it could have got, um, my wife's in here asking what I want for dinner. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know that that could have gotten much wider uh, unless the bottom would have been wider. Um, that's one of the limiting factors on something like that as well. For how wide I made the bottom, that's, that's I mean, that's really pushing it. Um, like I said, it's a little bit thick, but I don't mind that uh, for anything that size. Um yeah, I have an Instagram, uh, Viviana. Uh, it's just ma at Matthew Kelly Pottery. Well, I'm glad that helped, uh, uh, Michael. Whoop. Are you offering Wild to come watch the kids? <laughs> Jens, I'm glad I'm glad it's helped. Thanks for the comment. I I've never done that reverse engineering, Nathan. Um, um, you know that's I, I'm I'm good at math, but to me, if I if I get too um, too into the weeds with stuff like that. I don't know. Just I, uh, I would take the fun out of it for me. I think I don't know. I, I mean, every once in a while, when I, after I'm done throwing, I might factor up like, oh, I made a hundred coffee mugs, and it, you know, so much per mug, it's worth that much money. You know, I've thought of that, but so. Um, <laughs> oh, Vancouver, awesome man! I've been there. Uh, went to. Uh, uh, Vancouver Island to Victoria to, uh, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I've, uh, I'm using my phone for, for live streaming. Uh, trimming, Viviana, I, I don't do much, uh, if any, trimming as far as like what a lot of people do for trimming pots. Um, when I handle my pots, my, my last video handled uh, showed about how I usually let my pots dry on the bat and how I handle them coming off the bat. What do I enjoy throwing the most? Um, I, I don't really know, man. I just I I just love clay, man. I, I thought of that the other day. I was I was getting some clay out of the bag to make handles for those other. Um, planters that I made and uh, I was like man I just I just love clay I love how it smells I love how it feels I love how it looks um, so it's just you know <laughs> you knew how I would say that well uh, yeah I don't I mean I, I really don't I mean there are sometimes I, I have things that I don't want to make but you know that's just you know every once in a while Um, I draw inspiration from a lot of things, uh, Nathan, um, you know, other pots that I see, um, things that I, you know, 
Yeah, if I'm away from throwing, I definitely, I don't know that I feel sad, but I definitely love to get back into throwing. <laughs> yeah, we have a bunch of handmade pots inside. Uh, uh, most of the time it's it's not cooked in. Now I have a pie, an apple pie sitting in there that was baked in one of my pie dishes, and if there's still some of that left, I'll have that for dessert. You're welcome, Kathy. I'm glad, uh, glad it helps. Um, all right, let me throw one more. Um, somebody asked about talking about how I use the sponge in my right hand. Let me grab a ball of clay. They're behind you. Behind you. Don't turn around and look. They're not actually behind you. They're behind the camera. All right. All right, anybody, uh, we'll do this as the last one. I've already been live for almost an hour now. Um, I do I do sell at shows, and then I'm, I have an Etsy account that I'll be doing restocks um, uh, periodically. Um, yeah, I just recycle my clay. I just take the different clays that I use. I try to keep them separate in the wet form, and then I uh, dry them out and repug them. Anybody have a, a input on what they want to see with this last one? I was thinking I could show how to make a planter with the attached bottom, um, but that's actually going to be in my video that will probably be Saturday because the video that's coming out tomorrow is my kiln unloading, and then the video I've already recorded that will be coming out Saturday will be the uh, one on planters. All right, first, well, <laughs> anybody have uh, requests? Unless I missed one already in a comment. <laughs> Seth a face, yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. This one's for Seth. You got to buy it when it's done now. All right, I'll do, I see a, a, a bottle there. I'll do a, a vase slash bottle. Let me back camera up again so you guys can get more of the uh, ore in there. <laughs> the bidding starts. That's right. I can already tell you this clay ball, I don't know if it's because it's less clay or if it's actually a little bit softer, but it feels softer. But it could just be that it's three pounds instead of 10. So uh, with the sponge in my hand, I take, uh, I, I don't, I'm not fancy. I buy these uh, uh, masonry sponges from Lowe's Hardware and I cut them and I use uh, quarters of it as my ones in my hand and I use halves of it as the one that I clean my wheel head with. They're just a good quality sponge, um, but I use it in my right hand and I'll just get it wet. And then like, even when I'm doing this, I'll add water to the top and I just keep it there. And then if I need to, if I need more water, I just squeeze it. That way I, I'm controlling how much water and where I put it on the pot. I'm even gonna clean out the inside before I do my next pull. I get it wet, add a little bit of water to the top and then down the outside and then I keep it in that hand, and then, like I said, anytime I need it, it's there to help keep keep the pot clean, but also to uh, to add water when I need it. So you can see there, it's helped keep the pot clean as I'm pulling, and I got a little bit of clay there on my fingers as well. Clean off a spot at the bottom to start my next pull, and then I can, like I said, just add water to the top, down the side instead of splashing handfuls of water on the pot which is going to soak into the clay and make it harder to work with because it's going to make it more more wet more damp every time you add water it's soaking into that clay and it's going to get softer and softer and depending on like i said depending on what shape and size pot you're making it may not matter <clears throat> all right i'm gonna do one more pull here mainly at the bottom
right, there's the shape of the bottom. Get the little bit of water that's in the very bottom there out. Not much, as you can see. Now I'm gonna, like I said, using the sponge as well, I'm just gonna add water to this top portion right here, right down to the neck so that I can uh, crimp this in. I don't want water going all over the place. Something else I mentioned in that video about uh, uh, throwing small neck vases was to add water to the pot right where you're going to cut it off before you cut it off. That helps the needle tool glide into the clay better without grabbing. And uh, it helps a whole lot with cutting off the top of the pot like that. All right, well there you go. There's a, a three pounder with a tall skinny neck just for Seth, unless somebody wants to outbid him. <laughs> uh. All right, let me check up. On, uh, catch up. I keep on saying check up. Let me catch up on comments, and then uh, and then we'll end it. It's been uh, sixty five minutes, so. <laughs> hey, monk, how you doing? Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> well, what do I want for dinner, Bruce? Yeah, I know. I need to. I'll just get off and I'll go tell her. Oh, did she come back in here? Sorry. Did she? <laughs> I don't see her. Anyway. Um, let's see. Yeah, give it, give it a shot, Jan. Definitely. Uh, Colleen, yeah, uh, the peacock platter bowls, that's still a little bit of a trade secret. I mean, I have a couple friends that have figured it out. I will tell you one thing, I don't alter the shape of the bowl. I had somebody that thought that, that I pushed in the clay, and I don't do that. It is a glaze technique for sure. I have a lot of bats, uh, D. I, uh, uh, I probably have over a hundred of the square bats, and then I probably have at least 50 of these round ones. 
And so it, it, within the process of them drying and staying on there, um, yeah, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Yeah, I, I definitely, I've, I've made a lot of vases uh, like that. And uh, I couldn't do them in my sleep, but I have people have said, I bet you could throw with your feet. And I'm like, no, I haven't tried that one yet either. <laughs> hey, Tango, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you here. Oh yeah, Spooky, I, I definitely, um, if you want to uh, send me a message, comment on one of my videos with, a, with, a, with that question about the uh, recipe, um, or send me a message on Instagram or Facebook, any of those, and I will, uh, I'll be happy to share the recipe for my slips. I use a, uh, a red slip, um, a black one, and a white one, and then um, that's pretty much it. I, I probably have a couple others, but those are the main ones that I use. Um, Oh, Monk, sorry about that. Yeah, my, my wife wants to know what I want for dinner, and I figure I've been on here for a little over an hour. Um, but I'll, I'll try to give more notice next time I'm doing a live stream so people can have a heads up. Um, but if you haven't, um, you know, on the YouTube channel, subscribe and hit the notification button. That way you are notified if I'm going to be doing a live stream. Um, like I said, I hadn't thought about doing it because I've been really focused on getting videos out this year. My plan for the whole year is to get two videos a week and... Uh, yeah, I know. John was very, very sweet to uh, to uh, mention me in that video um, uh, about the uh, the slow cool and uh, gave me a big shout out. But um, um, yeah, I definitely plan to do two videos a week this year as much as I can uh, control that. I knew um, I knew that I could pretty much control uh, my output of videos. I can't control my subscriber count or my my views necessarily, but I figure if I can uh, if I can put out two videos a week, then I can grow the channel and uh, help out um, the sales of my pottery and just the, the uh, revenue I get from YouTube. Um, as you guys know, that's, that's a thing. And if I'm going to take all this time and put it into making videos, then I definitely want it to turn around and, and uh, be compensated for that if possible. Um, so as long as that's working, I'll definitely be here. And uh, um, I like making the videos. So you guys are very, very welcome. I'm glad, to, I'm glad to be here and glad to help. And uh, like I said, I'll be doing another live stream, and I'll try to let you guys know ahead of time. Um, all right, there's my wife again. She's in there waiting. So, <laughs> All right, thank you guys, uh, always as always, for being here and supporting the channel and uh, supporting my work. And I will be doing another uh, Etsy sale sometime soon as well. So uh, anyway, you guys have a great one, and uh, see you soon. All right, love you guys. I really appreciate you. All right, bye.